Hi, Mia and CJ. This is Grammy. Hi. Okay, so bad news. Jack's first day at school went quicker and better than he'd expected. He'd worried about what his new classmates would be like and if he'd fit in. But it hadn't been as bad as he thought. None of the boys he'd met on the playing field were in his class, and all the teachers had been friendly. At the end of the afternoon, Grandad and Elan were waiting for him by the back gate, which led into the lane. Good day, Grandad asked. It was okay. I've put my name down for the choir auditions. They're doing a concert at the end of term. Good for you, said Grandad, and patted Jack on the back. Got a lot of homework tonight? I've got things I have to do, Jack replied. He didn't want to lie to Grandad, but he couldn't tell him about the flying lessons. Nora said Jack can use her library for his homework, said Elan. That's really kind. I've only got a few books. Most of them are about gardening, Grandad replied. See you later then, Jack said as they reached Grandad's gate. Dinner's at six. Don't be late. I won't, Jack promised. Were you okay today, Elan asked when they were alone. It was fine, apart from my aching muscles not being able to concentrate too well. Jack looked around. Where's Camelin? Keeping watch, laughed Elan, just in case you had any trouble. He said he wanted to be ready for those boys if they showed up and started anything. Camelin must have heard his name. He appeared above them and spiraled into a nosedive. He pulled out at the last moment with a backwards flip. Wow, exclaimed Jack. Don't encourage him, laughed Elan. He'll get big-headed. Camelin swooped around and landed carefully on Jack's shoulder. Ready for your lesson, he croaked, and he whispered in Jack's ear. See you later for mine. Jack only had two things he needed to find out for homework, and Elan knew exactly where to look in Nora's library. It wasn't long before he was able to transform. <clears throat> he worked on landing and taking off and managed to fly in and out of Camelin's loft. The time went too quickly and Jack had to hurry down to the gap in the hedge and run all the way back to Granddad's. Later, when Jack was in his room, Camelin tapped on the window. He had a piece of paper in his beak. Jack thought it was a letter from Nora until he saw the drawings. There was a circle filled with smaller circles, a raspberry, an ice cream, and a lot of long lines with which Jack recognized as noodles. Can you put the letters on? Camelin asked. It's for Orin. Jack looked again at the pictures and realized the first had to be an oat cake. He wrote Orin in big capital letters and pegged it onto her cage. Excuse me. Not bad, he said. I'm sure she'll love it. Of course, she won't know the letters, but she'll be able to read my pictures, croaked Camelin, obviously pleased with himself. By Thursday night, Jack had settled into his new routine. The school wasn't the same as he'd been used to, but he liked his teacher and no one had bothered him. Elan came to meet him at the gate and they'd talk about the things he'd done during the day. As soon as he arrived at Ewell House, he went to the library and did his homework, then concentrated on flying. After dark, Camelin would arrive for his lesson, and once he'd gone, Jack played with Orin until she snuggled down on his bed. It was then he'd get out his Book of Shadows and ask as many questions as he could. He learnt more about Hamadryads, the High Druid, and the Sacred Groves. He found out about the four main festivals which used to take place on top of Glass Ruin Hill. He'd tried discussing what he'd read with Camelin, but the raven wasn't interested, so instead he told Orin. On Thursday night, he made a discovery, which worried him. It was something he needed to speak to Elan about, and it couldn't wait until tomorrow. He opened his book at the first page and wrote her name at the top. He glanced at the clock. It was getting late. He hoped she hadn't gone to bed. He hesitated. It was hard to begin to write what he wanted to say. The book says that to open the window in time, everything must be equal. 
It says that those performing the ritual must have the same powers. Is this right? Jack watched the words fade into the page. He paced up and down the room. This was going to be a big problem. Nora had said she was the last druid on earth. Without someone with the same powers, they'd never be able to perform the ritual. What would they do? Where could they find another druid to help them? He tapped his wand in his hand impatiently. Look, Orin squeaked. You've got some writing. Jack quickly read Elan's answer. Yes, that's right. He felt even more anxious. Who will help her? The reply wasn't what Jack expected. I will. We'll talk about it tomorrow. Jack was going to have to wait. He tried asking the book more questions about the ritual, but wasn't able to get any more answers. Eventually, the book snapped shut and refused to open again. There was nothing else he could do but go to bed and wait until after school to find out more from Elan. He didn't sleep well. What's wrong? asked Elan as they walked towards Ewell House. I don't understand how you're going to help Nora. You've got to have exactly the same powers. How can that be? Some things aren't as they appear. That doesn't answer the question. Elan sighed deeply. There are still some things we haven't told you. Like what? Well, you know I can shapeshift into a ferret. Not just into a ferret, unlike Nora. Jack's mouth fell open. He stopped walking and stared at Elan. You mean you're not a girl? No. What are you? I thought you were my friend. I thought Nora was your aunt. I am your friend, but Nora isn't my aunt. Are you a druid? <clears throat> No, I'm a nymph. Not like Jeanette. No, I'm one of the fair folk of Anwen. Did you shapeshift into a girl on purpose to trick me? Oh, Jack, no. I wouldn't do such a thing. When the cauldron plates went missing, I got trapped here with Nora. There was a group of us waiting to make the last journey into Anwen, but, as you know, we couldn't go. While we waited for someone to help us, Nora chose to be old, and I chose to be young. Jack shook his head in disbelief. This meant Elan had to be the same age as Nora. So what do you look like? When you find the cauldron plates and we reopen the western portal into Anwen, you'll be able to see me as I really am, but not until then. Jack didn't know what to say. He hadn't even considered that Elan was anything other than she appeared. He thought she'd learned how to do things with her wand from Nora, just as he had. Will I ever see you again if we succeed? I have to return to Anwen to renew my strength. Like Nora and Arana, I won't survive forever on Earth. But it doesn't mean I won't see you again. Jack swallowed hard. <clears throat> His eyes watered as he fought back the tears. Saying goodbye to Nora, Elan, and Camelon wasn't something he'd be able to do easily. They'd probably soon forget about him once they went through the portal. No matter what Elan said, he might never see them again. He swallowed hard and straightened his back. He'd promised to help, and he would. He'd been having fun and had forgotten it was a matter of life and death for Nora and Arana. And now, it seemed, for Elan, too. They were his friends, and he wouldn't let them down. Are you all right? Elan asked as she put her hand on Jack's arm. I am now, he replied, and managed to smile. It was just a bit of a shock. That's why we didn't tell you everything at once. We didn't want you to be frightened and run away. I probably would have done. I'm good at running. Bet you're not as fast as me, she laughed. Beat you to the sundial. They ran and laughed all the way into Nora's garden. As they sped past the bird table, a flock of starlings took off. Told you I could beat you. Jack was too out of breath to answer. As he gulped for air, he noticed Camelin waddling on the roof, shouting something. 
something to the startled birds as they flew past. He was too far away to hear, but he had a good idea what his friend had been saying. Next time you can have my backpack on and then we'll see who wins. Oops. Next time you can have my backpack on and then we'll see who wins, Jack said when he finally got his breath back. I think you had a bit of an advantage. Big day tomorrow, Nora said as she joined them. A longer flight for you and Jack and a visit to Westwood to reunite Charcoal with his family. Jack didn't want to have to say goodbye to Charcoal. He really liked the little dragon. Will he come back and visit? I certainly hope so, replied Nora. He'll probably bring Norris and Snook with him, too. It's a good job they're only small, or we wouldn't all fit in the kitchen. Did someone say kitchen? Is it tea time? Camelin asked as he swooped down onto Nora's shoulder. You know very well it's not, but now we're together, I've got some good news. I'm meeting Peabody tonight at dusk. Where? Camelin asked. Here. He's going to use the tunnel. We'll leave your flying lesson until later, if you don't mind, Jack, and have an early tea. We need to be ready for our visitors. Once he's returned my golden acorn, we'll put it somewhere very safe until it's needed for the ritual. As the sun sank behind Glass Ruin Hill, they left the kitchen and went over to the hole in the garden. Nora raised her wand and removed the prickly bush. They didn't have to wait long before they heard footsteps inside the tunnel. They grew louder as they came closer to the entrance. In the half-light, Jack saw the end of a very long nose appear before the rest of Peabody stepped out onto the grass. Oh, great sunshine, Peabody began as he took off his cap and bowed low before Nora. I've come to speak with you. Speak, exclaimed Nora. I thought you'd come to return my golden acorn. It's the golden acorn I wish to speak of, most wise and kind guardian of the sacred grove, continued Peabody, as he bowed again. Where's my golden acorn? You know it's druid's gold, don't you? I do now, but I no longer have it. Explain yourself before I turn you into a brownie. Peabody straightened and replaced his hat. I came to explain. You see, my brother Pycroft has the acorn and I can't find him anywhere. He made me lie to the Spriggans. He's the one who gave me the torch for Chief Knuckle. He's the one you should be talking to. It wasn't my fault. When Nora didn't answer, Peabody began shuffling his feet and took a step towards the tunnel. Gerda settled herself down in front of the hole and eyed Peabody suspiciously. He stepped away from her. Can I go now? he asked quietly. Not until I've made a small adjustment to your nose, replied Nora. No, no, not my nose, wailed Peabody. Nora raised her wand and aimed it straight at Peabody's face. There was a green flash and a cry of surprise. For a few moments, the light blinded them all. As their eyes grew accustomed to the twilight again, Jack saw Peabody's glasses lying on the grass. He bent down and picked them up. My nose... My nose, sobbed Peabody. Everyone looked to see what was wrong. A small button nose, which wasn't long enough for Peabody to sit his glasses on, replaced the long, pointed one he'd been so proud of. Now we both have a problem, said Nora sternly. I'll restore your nose once you return my golden acorn. I suggest you find your brother qu quickly. You have ten days. Go and don't return without it. Peabody snatched his glasses from Jack's hand and put them in his pocket. He stumbled towards the hole. Gerda moved to the side and he dived in. They heard his retreating footsteps. No one spoke. That wasn't what I'd expected, Nora said eventually. Will he get the acorn back, asked Jack. I've just made finding it the most important thing in his life. I just hope he can get it back from Pycroft in time. There are only 14 days to the solstice, exclaimed, explained Elan. Until the ritual, Jack asked. Until the ritual, confirmed Nora. <laughs>